Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, my comic book friends, and welcome once again to Bizarre Brain Comics. And this is where I like to take a look at some older comics, talk a little bit about the characters and creators, and examine the stories and the art. Oh, my guy's here. Got out of the way. There we go. And this time I want to take another a look at some more of my Dell Tarzan comics from the 1950s. And these will be um, all photo, photo covers. But before I men mention that, I had previously done uh, uh, a bunch featuring the great artwork of um, Mo Golub from the 1950s and going through my, my collection. I found an, another one here. This is uh, from 1955, number 64, with his great Mo Golub painted cover. It was out of place, and now it will go back into place. These were some more recent acquisitions and didn't get put away properly. I, I had uh, some others too, but those were also uh, all um, duplicates of ones that I already had. So, this time, here, I want to... Talk about these covers, these here featuring photo covers featuring Gordon Scott. This is this first one is issue 80, and it was just a, a couple of issues before this when they started doing the uh, the photo covers again. And previously, they had done photo covers uh, for uh, uh, featuring uh, Lex Barker, who was the uh, the actor at that time. I had so few of those, but I have several of these, and this is just the first batch. And Gordon Scott. Scott was from 1926 to 2007, and he was born Gordon Merrill uh, Worschkul. I think that's how you pronounce it. And his name was changed to Scott because the producers thought it was a little too too close to uh, Weissmuller, you know. And uh, I mean, he, he's an American actor best known for his Tarzan roles and from five films plus one TV pilot movie. Which was a compilation of three episodes, which was Tarzan and the Trappers. And uh, he played Tarzan from 1955 to 1960. And he was the 11th Tarzan. That's the 11th official Tarzan. Um, and he started with Tarzan's Hidden Jungle. And he was discovered poolside. As I, if I remember correctly, he was a lifeguard. And he replaced Le uh, Lex Barker after he left the series. And his films ranged from the very cheaply uh, made TV uh, film to uh, uh, the very high, high quality, high production values uh, movies, including the first, first color. And first uh, Tarzan movie shot on location in Africa. As I said, that first uh, um, his first one was uh, Tarzan's Hidden Jungle from 1955. His second one was was uh, Tarzan and the Lost Safari, which is the first in color and the first largely shot on uh, on location in Africa. And speaking of Gordon Scott and and photo covers, here I want to show you this. I, I may have shown this once before for something else, but this is the novelization of Tarzan and the Lost Safari. It's from 1957, and uh, and as you can see here, here's the Gordon Scott photo on on the cover, and uh, this was uh, the last of last film made by these these producers uh, Saul Lesser is that right and uh, but it was the first the first big budget on location shoot um, it had um, other name big name stars or relatively big name stars and 
this film had, um, well, it still had the last movie featuring, oh, maybe not the last one, uh, it's like second to the last uh, movie of Tarzan uh, speaking with it, me, Tarzan, you, Jane type. And Jane is not in, not in this this film at all. It does have Cheetah. That, that's one of the things that makes this novel unique. There are, to my knowledge, three Tarzan novels uh, um, that were novelizations of from other media. Two from the uh, uh, feature films and one from a TV uh, pilot. And uh, if there are any others, I, I haven't seen or heard of them. And it says... As I said, Gordon Scott on the front, and the, the novelization of this had a was very very thrilling, and exciting, and in the novel he speaks normally like Tarzan would, uh, normal English, and he uh, um, uh, whoever did this novelization because there's, there's there's no credit for for the writer uh, had did made it very thrilling and added. Uh, uh, several more action-packed scenes um, that were not in the film. Maybe they had been originally uh, been in the original uh, script, uh, but cut out for for time. I don't know. Plus, uh, the uh, Opar appears in here, uh, the lost city of Opar. Except here, it's it's just a uh, um, a native village. And it was illustrated by artist uh, um, Tony Sagrio, and uh, I think, or Sagroi, I don't know how you pronounce his name, S G R O I. And here you can see an example on the, in the frontispiece of his artwork. And here's another example. And yet another example and in in my opinion he would have been just in general a better uh done better in the, the tarzan comics than um jesse marsh but I, I still enjoy jesse marsh's work okay so this one is no, uh, number 80 interior art by jesse marsh written by gaylord dubois with and I guess it was just a few issues before this one, they started doing Brothers of the Spear as a backup feature uh, by Russ Manning. So all these all these uh, feature um, Russ Manning backup stories of Brothers of the Spear. And, of course, his work, he later became the tar Tarzan artist and uh, for the comics, comic books and comic strips. And he um, was... Without a doubt, um, a much better draftsman than Jesse Marsh. And I don't mean to belittle Jesse Marsh. And this one is 82. Still a photo of, of uh, Gordon Scott. Um, these are all stills from the, from the films or production... Uh, um, production photographs. And this one had been remaindered where the uh, wasn't sold that they would uh, tear off the uh, the top part of the the comic and send it back so that they would get credit and then the remainder was intended to be destroyed. Well, this one obviously was not destroyed fortunately for me. This is uh, 83 uh, issue 83 this is from 1956. Issue 87 also 1956. Some really good Good shots of Gordon Scott. Now, along, yeah, uh, then then we jump to 93. So somewhere in between uh, that 87 and 93, they started doing uh, blurbs on the cover right here uh, regarding the uh, the interior stories. This is the quest for the ivory ring. Number three, and here is uh, number 94. Under the gaze of a thousand eyes, Tarzan outwits the Watchers. Number 94, <coughs> and a duplicate, and a little rougher shape, uh, 94, Gordon Scott. And then we, we round this out with 
98, 19, uh, those were 1956 and 1957, uh, number 98, and a very action-packed shot of Gordon Scott about in the process of hurling a, an African spear. So, this is, this is the last of these books here. And this little batch, I'll, I'll be back with some more another time to share some more photo covers and painted covers as we go on enjoying Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs from Dell Comics. <coughs> and... Thank you for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, if you will. Uh, have you seen these Tarzan stories, or these Tarzan movies, or any of these books uh, with these photo covers? They're just, uh, they're a nice bit of memorabilia with, with the photo covers, even though, by and large, I prefer the, the illustrated covers, especially like these here with uh, uh, from Bern Hogarth's graphic novels. But uh, I, I like the photo covers as well. And if you have any com uh, uh, questions for me about anything, let me know. And remember, people, comics are art!